welcome back to the Blue and Gold Report on this Tuesday, April 16th. After a fine talk with Dominique Taylor, we have a charming young man with us who was part last year of the national champion UC Irvine men's volleyball team from nearby Huntington Beach and well-known modern-day high school sophomore opposite hitter Zach La Cavera. Zach, great to see you. Thank you for having me. Well, the MPSF tournament is right around the corner, and uh, it's got to be a great feeling for you. You went through it one time, and you ended up eventually winning the national mm -hmm. championship. Um, quick comment, Zach, on what it was like as a freshman to come in and win a D1 national championship. Uh, just your thoughts back on the moments in, in, in the process of going through that. I mean, it was great. Being on the team as a freshman and being able to play in the beginning of the year was really awesome. I mean, I didn't get to start, but it was great being able to get in and then kind of going through the ups and downs of the season and then winning the NBSF uh, tournament and then w winning the national championship all together. It was just, it was quite a whirlwind, but it was completely awesome. And especially with me uh, winning my CIF championship in high school and then yeah. going into winning a championship in uh, the national championship in college is been a really great couple of years for me in volleyball so you will always wear the moniker winner uh, yeah. just there and then hopefully there's one or two more mm -hmm. and there very well could be national championships at Irvine before it's said and done did you and any teammates or the team as a whole after winning it did you get together over the summer and have a dinner or a little celebration or anything to uh, commemorate that well, yeah, even that night after we beat USC and the Galen, we all uh, hightailed our asses to the to the bus and made it quickly back home. We had a nice little party that night, and then uh, the next morning we even hung out at a teammate's house down in uh, Emerald Bay, Travis Wilson's house, yeah. and uh, we had a nice little day there, just hung out and Soaked talked it all about in. it all. Yeah, so it was really good. Great. Well, Zach, the team is 21-6 and six this year. You're number two in the MPSF tournament. You've been anywhere from number one to number four in the country, and mm -hmm. you're going to play the number seven seed, UC Santa Barbara. By the way, that will be this Saturday night at the Bren Center, UCI, UCSB. Come out. It's a tremendous... If, if you've been there, you don't need me to sell it. If you haven't, it's a tremendous venue and facility for volleyball. It's loud. It's exciting. You're right on top of the game. Um, Tell us a little bit. You defeated Santa Barbara 3-0 and 3-1 earlier this year. So you can't go in overconfident, can you? I mean, you you got to win this game. This is a must-match. Yes. I mean, everyone always kind of looked at uh, UC Santa Barbara as not being one of the greatest teams in our league. I mean, they did uh, make it to the finals a couple of years ago, but this past couple of years, they haven't been doing too great. But you can't let that, I mean, especially you can't let that go because especially when going to playoffs where it's do or die, you have to take every team just like they'd be the number one team and give it your all and strategize and work hard and practice and stuff. So, I mean, our history this season has proven that we have we've beaten them pretty decently. But like I said, you can't you can't uh, get to ahead of ourselves and take them very seriously. You play a key position in the sport of volleyball. Uh, you're just a sophomore starter, and you play the position called the opposite. Uh, explain to some people listening in who are casual volleyball fans but wouldn't know exactly what that position entails and where you line up and all that. Well, opposite hitters, it's you majority of the time hit on the, the right side of the net and you either hit in the front row and then as you rotate around you go into the back row and then you have to hit, uh, you're allowed to hit in the back row but it has to be, uh, you have to be behind the 10 foot line. And I mean, the main objective as an opposite hitter is just to be a really good offensive power. Obviously, you do still have to be a good defensive player and be, uh, I mean, good at the service line as well. But your opposite hitter is really known as the guy that kind of can pick the team up out of many bad situations, be able to put balls away even with not that many great sets, and uh, just be really powerful offensive guy. So, I mean, and it's really helpful to be left-handed in that position, and luckily I am. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just kind of the positioning of the set and the speed of it. Uh, it's really helpful to be left-handed, and a lot of teams aren't used to that so much. So it's, uh, it's good power to have. So. What is the key to being a successful hitter beyond that 10-foot line when you're on, uh, in the yeah. back row? Uh, I mean, having good vision of the court as well uh, is really needed, and... Uh, having good timing with your setter because if it's really difficult, it's I I believe it's a little tougher for me to get kills from the back row, just because uh, it kind of allows the blockers a little more time to get out to you and have a 
set up a good block on you. So you got to have good vision of the block and good vision of the backcourt, see uh, where the floor defenders are. So uh, it's, yeah, just like that. And then being have, able to have a good uh, range of shots, not have to hit the same shot every time so the, the other team doesn't get used to you and strategize against that. So. Zach, you're six four, which is a good height. Obviously, very good height for volleyball. But you're you're not extremely long mm -hmm. compared to to what BYU generally they usually go six nine to seven foot yeah. across across their front line. So you must have great lift and uh, be able to generate a lot of power. How how do you do that? Yeah, I I the lift natural. Uh, it's a little confusing because my my older brother jumps pretty well too, and uh, I mean I, I jump pretty well also. But I feel I think. Some of that is hereditary, and then uh, I think I got some of it because I was I was a big soccer player before I was I played mm. volleyball and I played soccer for many years. I think it was about uh, ten or twelve years, and uh, I think that just the, the development of my legs and stuff like that and my good footwork kind of helped with my vertical, and uh, and then also I played a, a lot of beach volleyball because I live right I live at the beach, so That's a lot of beach volleyball helps your. Uh, because you're slower, you move half as fast on the beach, and you can't jump as high, so it really works your leg muscles more. And I, I credit some of that to my vertical to some of the beach volleyball as well. Well, that leads me to this then. Uh, you, you're certainly, at this point, uh, have the potential and the skill and ability to uh, make some money at some point upon mm -hmm. graduation here of playing volleyball. If you had your druthers and you could make a living for 10 years, would you prefer to do it going overseas? Uh, playing some of the clubs overseas, or would you rather play on the beach? Uh, as for right now, I, I enjoy indoor a little bit more than yeah. beach volleyball. It is great to go out and play uh, with your buddies, or even tournaments too on the beach. But uh, I, I'd say I enjoy indoor a little bit more, and like uh, having six guys on the court, more of a team teamwork Good aspect team. to it. So yeah. I'm, a big, I'm a big team guy. So. Well, <laughs> we're, we're so glad to have you. The Anteaters are 21-6 and six on the year. They're the number two seed in the best, easily the best conference in men's volleyball, the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. And again, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, first serve at the Bren Center against number seven seed, UC Santa Barbara. Um, the record's terrific, but you've been streaky. I mean, you yeah. start out 4-0 and like you were going to, you know, Sherman going through Georgia. I mean, you're going to be undefeated. And then you lost three straight. You went on another 11, 12, 13 yeah. game winning streak, something along those lines. Dropped a couple. Um, what, what, what's the deal with the streakiness? Because your last four matches, you haven't lost a game. Mm -hmm. It's This year has definitely been interesting. Uh, I mean, kind of, I think a big period of the season was uh, our team just trying to figure out who exactly we were and how exactly we were going to do things. I mean, with our new coach coming in, David Niffin, we, I mean, a, a lot of us wanted to try and go still off uh, our proven successes of last year. I mean, what, because we knew what it took to win last year. Right. And many of us try to hang on to that, but you ha we have to realize with a new coach and, uh, I mean, new guys on the on the court too, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be the exact same thing. And I think we're having a little bit of trouble trying to realize that and, Putting the new uh, the new coaching style and the new guys on the court into practice, so uh, it has resulted in a pretty streaky season. But it's, it's pretty typical with the vol with the volleyball, uh, especially with our league, with so many good teams and so many upsets. It's kind of it's almost typical for stuff like that to happen. And you're four months in now. I mean, people forget you start December thirtieth, thirty first, mm -hmm. January first, right right there, and uh, now it's getting into late April, and and you could go into May. So yeah, every every uh, Great team's going to have some peaks and some valleys. Um, tell us about Coach Niffin. First year, and he inherited some, a great team, but mm -hmm. a lot of pressure too. Yeah. And there were some graduations. Uh, how, how's it been to work with, with Coach Niffin, David Niffin, who, uh, of course, was a great anteater volleyball mm -hmm. star of, on his own? It, it's been really good. I mean, uh, he when I was being recruited to UCI, he was on, he was on the, the coaching staff. He was an assistant here, so I didn't... I mean, I knew him, and him and I t uh, chatted quite a bit, and so I kind of got a, some image of what he was going to be like, mm -hmm. and then he left when my freshman year, he went to go help out at Illinois, so, but then when he came back, I had this whole, this whole vision that I thought he was going to be very, almost identical to Spraw, because, uh, I mean, he kind of was under Spraw's wing when he was on our assistant staff here, so I think, I personally thought that, and I think maybe a couple of other guys uh, that didn't know Niff too well, 
thought the same thing. And uh, soon enough in the season, Nick realized that he was actually very different from John Sparrow. So, I mean, it's I like the change. I like I like his coaching style for sure. And uh, yeah, just that period of uh, transitioning between getting uh, from us being used to how John Sparrow would coach to, into how uh, Coach Niffin does is uh, it took a little bit of time, but I I think everyone is adjusted to it and uh, actually enjoys his coaching style. Well, and he seems to have really. Uh uh, gained during the course of the year an even greater feel for his personnel and how to use them and the adjustments. Mm -hmm. One big one has been Ian Castellana, mm -hmm. uh, who has been inserted as a middle blocker and made a difference, right? Yeah, it was, uh, was kind of weird how it all came about because uh, beginning of the year, it was, we were pretty solid with our two middle blockers uh, that were starting, Scotty Kevorkin and, and uh, Colin Maring. And uh, they were doing great. I mean, uh, sure. Colin was putting up great numbers, and uh, Scotty was also as well. And then, and then you saw we saw Jason coming in a little bit. I think he started at BYU and he did a pretty good job and got some good blocks. And so we thought that was kind of going to be set with the whole uh, middle position right there. And then uh, I think it was I think it was Stanford when uh, we first put Ian in, and everyone was a little iffy about it. Didn't really know, but. I mean, Ian did really well, and he proved himself, got some great numbers, and he started against Pacific as well, and he put up great numbers then as well. And then when we played uh, Penn State this past weekend, he did really great as well. So, I mean, it's everyone was a little iffy about it because he's pretty different from your typical middle. I mean, he's pretty undersized. He's, uh, he yeah, like he's undersized. His arm's a lot quicker than uh, a lot of your middles that you see. And I think that's what's uh, what's been benefiting him actually is all, all these uh, the middles that he's been going against aren't used to his quicker arm and his more uh, agile uh, coordination. So he, it's been doing pretty well. I mean, like I said, he's been putting up good numbers. Well, you guys are peaking at the right time, mm -hmm. and that's important in any sport: basketball, baseball, volleyball, water polo, whatever. To to really hit your peak, and uh, the Anteaters are definite, legit national champion contenders, a chance to go back to back. And remember, the Anteaters have won three times in the last six years. Uh, what's it like to play against John Sparrow? Obviously, uh, uh, it's interesting scenario. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, emotional ties still uh, between. How could there not be? Yeah, I mean, he, he was such a great coach at Irvine. I mean, it obviously shows with his national titles he's made here and some of the players he's been able to bring in. So it, we build we build a good relationship with uh, with John Spraw, and then having him leave was was a heartbreak. So you still have that feeling whenever you see him and he, him and his teams on the other side of the net. But I mean, uh, with how uh, intense this league is, you definitely have to try and brush that aside and just see him as see him as the enemy and see him as the opponent. Let that go. Well, you gave him a pretty good pounding or two there, mm -hmm. uh, Zach. So uh, I, I'm <laughs> sure he's uh, scratching his head and goes, yeah, you know, I had a pretty good thing over at UCI. Well, it worked out great for six years. You have a great coach now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have you and a core of, uh, of young men battling again for a national title. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get a little bit into the personal side of Zach. He is one interesting character. We wouldn't have him on the blue and gold, would we? So we'll take a break back in 60 seconds more of Zach LaCavera from UC Irvine Men's Volleyball on KUCI. <laughs> 